what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and today at the Apple event, I got to see the new iPhones, the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6S Plus. They're both coming out in late September for the same price as the current iPhones were when they launched, so of course, I took a good hard look. Now, as expected, the design of the 6S is pretty much the same as the 6. In fact, the only way you'll be able to tell you have the 6S is by that little S badge on the back. Uh, of course, also if you have the new rose gold color, which to my eye is really more of like a pale pink. But yeah, other than that, from top to bottom, all the way around the outside of this phone, it's the same phone. Although the new 6S Plus is actually a little bit heavier in the hand than the current 6 Plus. And I think we can thank Bendgate for that, since Apple is now using a 7000 series aluminum alloy to strengthen the body, but it's only a couple extra grams. So there are three main improvements to know about in the new iPhone. New specs, new cameras, and new display. So the spec bump is, is in the processing really, so the, the 6S is rocking a new Apple A9 chip, which is supposedly nearly twice as fast in the CPU and GPU performance, but that's really the only spec difference that they told us about. As far as I know, it's still one gigabyte of RAM, still the same non-removable battery, and still starting at 16 gigs of non-expandable storage. So everything else stayed the same, it's just adding the new A9. Uh, and the camera in the iPhone is really a bump that got me interested in it a lot. So before, the iPhone had an 8 megapixel camera, as we all know. This new iPhone is rocking a 12 megapixel sensor, which is awesome for a couple reasons. One, that means the photos will be even crispier, and if the demo photos from the events are any indication, we may have a new number one best smartphone camera. And number two, 12 megapixels now means we have a large enough sensor, or enough pixels, for 4K video. So this smartphone is now capable of hanging with the heavy hitters like the Galaxy S6 and Note 5 and LG G4 and everything, pretty much every other smartphone that's come out this year that shoots 4K video. Plus the 6S also has optical image stabilization that now works during video as well. So I'm really looking forward to testing this camera a lot more. And as a bonus, the front facing camera also got a nice little bump up to five megapixels and it now uses the display as a dual tone flash according to the ambient light, smart. And with these new iPhones, you can now turn on something called Live Photo, which will capture one and a half seconds before and after you snap the photo, which is pretty neat. And you can view the live photo by pressing down on the photo in the gallery, which brings us to our third and final major change, and that's 3D touch. Not force touch, 3D touch. But basically the same thing as force touch. So now the iPhone 6S display is pressure sensitive and to multiple levels. So you can press down a little harder on the display to bring up a context menu in tons of places all over the OS. It's kind of like an expand button or a more info button. So you can 3D touch an icon on the home screen to bring up some quick actions for that app. Or you can press an address in a thread to preview the location in Apple Maps. Or you can press a thread in a messaging app itself to preview what's in that thread. And with all these previews, if you like what you see, then you can press even harder to fully expand and bring yourself into it. Or if you don't want to, then you can release the force touch and then it shrinks itself back. So it seems like this can be useful at a level on a smartphone. Uh, it'll probably take some getting used to. The thing is, I was just playing it for a few minutes and I started to get the hang of it. Uh, and the Taptic engine in the phone is also larger and a bit heavier and is now much more precise. So it feels more like the force touch on the Apple Watch, which is impressive. And it's fast. I mean, obviously the whole phone will be fast with that new A9 chip and moving around the interface combined with swipes and gestures I already know. Combining that with the 3D touch just made it feel nice and fast. I don't know. The quick tip is with the home screen icons, you can press and then swipe over onto the action you want to perform, which was really quick. And multitasking with the 3D touch swipe in from the left side is also pretty quick now too. So definitely a little bit of a learning curve to get everything down and figure out where you want to use 3D touch, uh, but it's promising. Also third party apps can and definitely will take advantage of this 3D touch too. So there was a couple things demoed. There was a game that can literally change weapons if you press the display harder. Uh, there was also apps like Facebook and Instagram that are already coded and updated to take advantage of 3D touch on the iPhone 6S. So there you have it, it's the new iPhone. Uh, the TLDR is it's faster, crispier, and a little more sensitive. So faster chip, faster touch ID, faster UI, crispier for the cameras on the front and the back, and that 3D touch pressure sensitive display. It's not all super new stuff. I mean, lots of it has been seen in other smartphones before, but when going from iPhone 6 to iPhone 6S, this is about what I expected. 
Anyway, the full review will come when I get to use this guy as my daily driver, so let me know with a comment what you guys want to see tested right below that like button, and I'll get to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.